Hi, my name is Jin Choi and I'm the founder of Money Geek and welcome to the 10th episode of the short course on investments. And today we're going to learn about how investments are taxed. From the tax man's perspective, there are three types of investment gains that you can have. And those are interest, capital gains, and dividends. So let me explain each one of these. You earn interest income when you own bonds or GICs. So in other words, something that pays interest. Now, so if you own $1,000 worth of bonds and if it pays 2% interest, then you earn $20 per year uh, of interest. This interest income is taxed at the normal tax rate. Uh, so it's taxed as if you earn this money through working. In other words, it's taxed at the marginal tax rate. So if your marginal income tax rate is 30%, then interest income is taxed at 30%. You earn capital gains when you sell an investment for a higher price than what you bought it at. So for example, if you buy 100 shares of Coca-Cola at $30 per share last year, and if you sell them this year at $40 a share, that means you made a profit of $1,000 on those shares. So this $1,000 profit from selling the Coca-Cola shares at a higher price that is the capital gains. Now until you sell your shares, you don't incur capital gains. So you don't get taxed until you sell your shares. And when you do sell your shares, you pay half of your marginal tax rate on your capital gains. So for example, if you have made $1,000 trading in Coca-Cola stock, and if your uh, marginal tax rate is 30%, then you would pay 15%, which is $150, on those capital gains from trading Coca-Cola shares. And lastly, dividends are payments made by a company whereby they return money to its shareholders. And dividends are actually taxed according to a formula, which I won't get into here. But most of the time, dividend tax rates come out to be slightly higher than the capital gains tax rates. Now in future episodes, I'm going to talk about RSPs and TFSAs. But for sake of comparison, let me walk you through a hypothetical scenario whereby the investor doesn't use any of these tax shelters. Now let's say that you earn $60,000 and you want to earmark 6,000 of those pre-tax dollars for investments. And let's say that your average tax rate is about 25%, which means that after you pay your income taxes, you have $4,500 left. Let's say that you then invest the $4,500 in stocks. And since you're a good investor, let's say that this $4,500 grows into $9,000 a decade from now. And for simplicity's sake, let's say that these stocks didn't pay out any dividends. So all the gains were capital gains. At this point, you sell your investments. So you incur a capital gain of $4,500. And let's say that at this point, your marginal tax rate is about 34%, which means that 17% of your capital gains goes to the tax man. So if you do the math, that means an extra $765 goes to the tax man. So at the end of the day, after everything is taxed, you will be left with $8,235 from the $6,000 of pre-tax income that you decided to invest a decade ago. And that's basically how investments are taxed. So let me summarize what we've learned today. We learned that we earn interest income when we uh, hold bonds and GICs. And we learned that interest income is taxed at the marginal tax rate, just like normal income. We learned that we incur capital gains when we sell an investment for a higher price than what we bought it at. And we learned that these capital gains are taxed at half of the marginal tax rate. Lastly, we learned that dividends are payments made by a company when they decide to return money to its shareholders. And we learned that dividends are usually taxed at a slightly higher rate than capital gains. And that's what I have for today. If you found this video helpful, please consider sharing it with someone you know. In the next episode, I'll talk about RSPs. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a great day.